So moving along and looking around, what I've discovered is the previous owner has placed that sensor upside down on the carburetor. So I'm going to turn that, I'm going to look for a circuit and see if that cures the problem for that particular carburetor. So now I've got my multimeter on and this thing has a slide on it. I'm going to slide it up and down. till I find circuit and then I'm going to fix it in that position so that I know it's lined up properly. So I have zero ohms of resistance. Uh, the thing is up about an eighth from, from center and I will tighten that down. Okay, so moving along to the third player in this game. Um, take my humongously long screwdriver. Stick it through here. Loosen these. I have no circuit. Now, let me see here. So I'll, I'll move this up, move this up, and you can see that now I have made a circuit by readjusting this, and I will tighten it back up. Well, Probably going to be the lowest quality video you've ever seen on YouTube, um, but hopefully it's informative. Um, so I have zero ohms of resistance. I can put my carburetor back where it belongs. And I'll tighten them up now so I don't forget. This is riveting information right here how to tighten the carburetor boot you want to look at those make sure they're not all split because a vacuum leak will cost you an engine on a two-stroke engine uh, very quickly so third one I got pointing the other way because it's easier to get to over here um, in a perfect world right now I would be making sure the tops of all these carburetors are facing exactly the same way, like nice and flat across the top. That way my my floats all work together. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you with plugging these back in. I'm going to plug them back in. I'm going to take the jumper out. I've already fixed that. I already know that my kill switch works because I tested it here. And I'll see if I have spark. So I shut off the lights so I can see spark. I don't want to start this engine because I'm in the middle of giving it an overhaul, the sled, a basic update. So I'm going to see if I have spark now, see what happens. And there it is. Uh, so that's how you troubleshoot that particular system. As best as I know it, your results may vary. And um, in the future, I plan on doing some videos to teach teenagers how to do basic things that uh, they don't seem to have anybody around to teach them anymore, like how to change a tire on their car, how to get a jump start, um, 
and uh, basic skills that they could use uh, rather than just push a button on their phone and have somebody else come and do it for them. So if you like the video, click like. If you don't, click you don't like. And thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to do a video, even though it's my first one. So if you like it, click like. Anyway, I've seen a lot of videos on the internet of people showing how to bypass the throttle position sensor circuit on an Arctic Cat snowmobile so that they don't need to use it anymore. Um, <clears throat> myself, when I was a teenager, I had my snowmobile go about a half a mile by itself at 70 miles an hour and launch off the snowbank next to the house and go through the picture window into my parents' house the day before my brother's wedding. So I know the importance of these systems and why they put them in in the first place. So I'm going to go over um, this system as best as I can understand it from watching YouTube videos, none of which taught me how to troubleshoot it, but only taught me how to bypass it. So here we go. So as I understand this system, the carburetors on the slide, they have a magnet. When the slide is all the way down, this sensor right here uh, watches for the magnet. And if it doesn't see the magnet, it um, assumes that the carburetor is stuck in the full throttle position. So it breaks a circuit to the ignition and the ignition won't work, uh, shutting off the machine. And my assumption is, I don't know this, I'm not a tech, my assumption is, is these three um, sensors are in series so that if one of the three has a stuck slide, um, it doesn't matter which one or all three, it will break the circuit. So um, what you do is you get your multimeter and you put it on tone and you take these sensors loose here. Now this one I've already readjusted, but I'm going to go over the next one. So if the sensor if the sensor is aligned properly, your multimeter will tone and it'll go to zero ohms of resistance. Now I'm told or I've read that these are very sensitive and if the magnet and the sensor get out of an alignment at all, um, you won't get a signal. So um, what I've started to do on this, I'll go to the next one. Um, hold on, got the wrong screwdriver. Um, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to turn the carburetor so I can get to the sensor. Sorry, I'm holding my phone in my hand. Um, like I said, it's my first video. I'll try to do better next time. But I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can so that people can troubleshoot it themselves. So there's the sensor. And I really don't want to take these carburetors out because they're really a bitch to get back in on this sled. So moving along, I'm going to unplug this. I'm going to set this down for a second. I've unplugged the second sensor. Um, I'm going to put my multimeter on the leads. It doesn't matter which order I get them on there. And... I am not making a circuit. So um, what I do, what you do from there, once again, I gotta grab another screwdriver. I'm gonna use this really long screwdriver. Everybody needs one of these. You loosen this and it's got slides on it. So, what you can do is you move this up and down
you move that up and down until you find a circuit. If you don't, you have a bad sensor. Um, and that's the sensor right there. Um, I was able to move this one up and down and find a cir circuit. This one I can't. So my assumption is this one's probably dead. Um, and I'll go down the line. I'll check the third one. I also could have a problem with the magnet, but or the magnets could have been taken out, but I know that's not true because I just rebuilt these carburetors. So once I get that serviced and get a circuit, move on to the next one. Um, once all three of them make circuit, I know that this side of this system is good. The next thing is when you give the sled throttle, there is a switch inside the inside the uh, throttle assembly that is made by moving that that way. And now there's no throttle yet. What this switch does is override those three and takes over for them as long as the throttle's on. When you let the throttle off, the circuit is looking for the, the slides to be in the off position. So if you troubleshoot all three of those or two, depending on your sled and this, and you make circuit in all three, all four positions, the machine should start unless you have a problem with the key switch or the kill button, which is a different system. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. I'm going to change that one sensor and I'm going to move on to the third one. And once I make circuit, I will um, try to start it without this jumper that everyone tells to put in, in the circuit. So, stand by.